good to be back. We've just been a month away, Etienne, myself in America, doing conferences. and We had an amazing time of ministry. Um, saw the children. And we heard we're going to become grandparents again for the second time, which is good. So we are blessed. But it's good to be home. That I must truly say, because I truly believe that a mighty move of God is on, on the edge right here in Stellenbosch. It's so right here. And was so prophetic as well when I was in America that you had people of America prophesying over Stellenbosch about a move of God coming. So that makes me excited. My question is, is are we ready for it? I know what we pray, I know what we ask, but are we ready for the move of God? You look in the Old Testament where God appeared in the tabernacle and everything, people could not even stand. So we've been created to reveal Him and to distribute his presence, to steward, to administrate his presence. What does it mean? To release the fullness of God and his glory. So we need to step into a place of maturity. We need to get mature. So we need to step into this place where God comes and consumes you in such a manner that every part of your being, your body, soul, and spirit craves for God, holds on to Him, cleaves on to Him, and never wants to be separated, not one second, even when you are sleeping. So I'm going to give you some keys this morning, what the Lord spoke to me about in America. Some things that we need to... Um, put systems and structures in place in our lives, things we need to encounter, things we need to do, that we are prepared for the goodness and the greatness of God. And we're not going to be religious. Remember what God says, 1 Corinthians 2 it says, certain things are just for people only that moves in the spirit will understand that to the flesh it is foolish. And so many times we shut down the gates of the supernatural. When people talk about spiritual things, supernatural things, we decline it, we reject it. So we're shutting down that gates that, so that we ourselves will not be able to apprehend and to administrate and to steward who God is and what he wants to do in you. Good thing that the Lord showed me, and we're going to um, Genesis 28, and we all know what happened in Genesis 28 with Jacob, but listen now, what happened in Jacob's life needs to happen in your, my life, so there's an encounter that happened, we know all about Jacob's ladder, but if you're going to look at Jacob's ladder, there are so many keys in it that needs to take place in your, my life, things that we need to consume, that we need to apprehend, that we need to bring into our own lives and build our structures on that to be strong and courageous in the times to come. Because I believe the Lord showed me a, a vision. He took me one night in a trance and a vision and he showed me the next 30 years what's coming. And I'm telling you now, we need to be ready. Yes, darkness is coming and darkness is going to attack and a lot of things are going to happen. But I'm telling you that the glory of God is going to fall upon this earth. And you and I will be amazed, will be blown away. Darkness will be blown away. So there's a shaking coming. And the shaking always comes when darkness are there. Because the Lord says, I hide myself in the darkness. And I'm telling you now, this is the time to reveal Jesus Christ in the fullness of His glory. And do you know how... Um, Special you are because God has chosen you for a time and a season to reveal Him for the greater things. This is the perfect time to reveal Jesus Christ. I'm going to read for you out of the Amplified, um, Genesis 28, verse 11. And He came to, this is Jacob, 
He came to a certain place and stayed there overnight because the sun was set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and he lay down there to sleep. Listen now. If you go and research the biblical times, if you're going to research the, the, the Old Testament especially, Jacob, Isaac, Abram, if you go back in history and things, what did they do? When the sun set, he stopped. Because in the biblical times, they had a belief that when the light shines, when the sun is out, God clothes the earth anew with new revelation and new things. So what did they believe in that time? When the sun sets, I need to settle down to position myself through the night time. I go in peace and dress and unity with God. So everything that He showed to me, that He released to me in the daytime, I need to position, I need to ground, I need to administrate, I need to steward it so that it bears fruit, so that it multiplies on the earth, so that God God gets glorified. My question is, what do you do at sunset? Have you taken hold of what God has showed you and revealed to you during the day, even when you're at work? Because a son of God walks through the day and he beholds everything about God. Whatever you look at, God is in it. God never stops talking. He speaks all the time. He speaks through creation. He speaks through nature. He even speaks through the word. He even says that the stones will worship me. So what do I need to do? If I'm a son of God, it means that I am alert to the voice of God. He says, my sheep knows my voice. So what I do, I take hold of what His voice reveals through me, even through the walls. And I go and I administrate it because a son of God is a lover of God. And you so desire for all of creation and all of the earth to encounter God, to, to be taken back in time. We sang about it in a song, He was and is and is to come. To take it back in time. We said, I knew you before you were in the mother's new womb. I knew you before the foundations of the earth. That's when everything was perfection. So what do we need? We need to go in peace and rest where God takes you back to where He knew you before creation that you can encounter, that you get a new desire to become that and to reveal that again. Because the son is taking one of the stones of the place. Listen now, prophetic. The rock. Yahweh. Jacob brought his mind, his thoughts, in alignment with God. He reunited his mind to the mind of Christ, the rock. And where is our war in the head? So Jacob became one with Yahweh the Father, with the rock taking on the mind of Christ and we know the mind of Christ as a man thinks with his heart so he is so what did he do he made sure that his foundations are strong that his mind is strong and nothing else can be in it I'll never forget it many years ago I was taken into the spirit one night and I was taken onto the sea of glass and crystal at the, on, the thr on the throne. And the next moment, the Lord said to me, step in the river underneath the throne. And suddenly I was taken and, and suddenly as I stood, a rock came. And it sort of caught me and it grew all over me that I was like cemented in this rock. But the rock was a black diamond. And the Lord said, that's where I want you to be, in me. I am that black diamond. 
I ask you today, who's your rock? Is that your bank account? Is it your children? Is it your job? What is it? What drives you in life? What is your focus? What consumes your mind? He put it under his head and lay down there to sleep. So he went into peace and rest. He positioned himself to receive and to hear. Because peace and rest is your position in heaven on the throne in, on Mount Zion in the new Jerusalem. So that is your seat of authority. And I've said it so many times. If you're not in peace and rest, you've got no authority in the spirit. And darkness knows that. So what did Jacob do? Positioned him in the great I am, reunited himself in peace and rest. So what happens? Now Jacob steps in the same dimension as Yahweh, what he says. I maintain and uphold all of creation through my mighty word of power. My words never fall to the ground. So Jacob have just become one with that declaration of God in his life. By His words will never fall to the ground because he's in peace and rest and he speaks out of God. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to the heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. So what is the ladder? ladder? What does the ladder represent? The ladder is the journey on the DNA string of God. And the, that DNA string of yours are exactly the same as the DNA string of God. Because he said, I gave you everything of myself. I gave you my fullness. So what happens now? Listen how prophetic, listen how God does everything, created everything to walk, to walk in unity with each other. Because he says in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18, I take you from glory to glory. When you walk on my ladder, on my DNA, I take you up from maturity to maturity, from glory to glory, and I reveal dimension to dimension to dimension to you. So every step that you take, with the rock in unity, you're stepping on a new dimension of his DNA and it's a new revelation. Let's take it further. Each and every step that you take is a new scroll. Scrolls of the times and the seasons that you are walking in as your daily scroll, your weekly scroll, your monthly scroll, your yearly scroll. Everything is a revelation. Every step that you take and that's part of the string of the DNA is scrolls that are hidden in Christ that shows you your journey, His plans, His purpose, His future for your life. So every day that you and I walk intentionally and with a purpose to glorify glorify Him and to manifest heaven as it is on earth. And the angels ascending, descending all the time. What does the angels do? People in that, we got so religious with angels. What do they do? Angels Protect the glory of God, that nothing defiles the DNA string of God, that it becomes until angels start praising, worshiping, holy, holy. Angels come and they encourage you, they cheer you on, they release messages to you so to keep you strong and courageous, to keep you focused on what happens. Angels come to release the sound, the frequency, the vibration of heaven, of that DNA, that it's enlightened you, that it 
that's accessible, that you step into the Word where God says, nothing are hidden to the sons of God, so that you've got eyes to see and ears to hear with spiritual discernment to glorify God and everything. And when you come in alignment with that sound of the DNA and what the angels are doing, it means that your DNA gets enlightened, it's vibrated, it releases a sound and frequency and vibration, it comes into unity with the one that gives life. You become, as we sang, a house of miracles. You become the Holy of Holies. Ephesians 2, he says, I created you to be the Holy of Holies. That's why in the season and times, you need to work with angels. Believe me, Jesus did it. He sent them, he created you for a purpose, to help and to assist you. What have you done with your angels this morning? And we come with the scripture, we take one scripture out of the word and say, only God instructs the angels. It's a word that says, God commands the angels upon you. Does it say, God? only God does it? No. You go back in Hebrew and you read forth in the, in the scriptures, he says, you are now higher than angels. You've been created as a king and a priest in the order of Melchizedek to reign and to rule. Angels are lower than you. They are there to support you. They are there to assist you. They are your warriors. They are your helpers. So you need to instruct them according to the purpose and the will of God. Let me make that clear. Instruct them according to the purpose and the will of God, not your own selfish desires. And I've always explained it. When a president or king, it's wartime, they sit in their office and instruct. They're not in the front line. You are king, so you instruct. And behold, the Lord stood over and beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abram, your father, forefather, and the God of Isaac. And I will give to you and to your descendants the lands on which you are lying. When you are obedient to God, when you are one of them, he always is with you. He arcs over you. You're under his wings, what is this read as well. You are united with him. And what does he do? He comes and he reminds Jacob, but he reminds you and I this morning. I'm the God of Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. Whatever I promises, promise them, it's yours. The covenant of God. I will protect you. I will guide you. You will multiply. Nothing will go wrong. You are blessed. So he reminds, and this morning God wants to remind you, that covenant is yours. And have you taken hold of it? Have you taken possession of it? Ownership of it? Because you need to take ownership. And when you take ownership, it's about a repositioning. Because you need to administrate. You need to prepare the way that God's word can manifest. That you become the revelation of his faithfulness and his goodness. That you become a living testimony of whom he is. So he comes to you and said, and I will give to you, and God, of, I will give to you and to your descendants the lands on which you are lying. Now, how do we think in the natural? We might think I'm lying on the land of Stellenbosch or the land of South Africa. But isn't the land of the globe all connected? in some way. The 
covenant says, whatever you see from the east to the west to the north to the south, as far as you can see, I give it to you. As far as I know, we see stars. We see the sun. We see the moon. We see galaxies. Everything you lay your eyes on, I give to you. Wow. So all of us are super rich. You've got a God that declared things to you before the foundations of the earth because he says in Ephesians 1, I showed you everything and I showed you your purpose, your calling, your destiny. And he gave it to you before you were even on the earth. question is what are we doing what, with what he has given to us what are you doing about it he even gave his fullness to you and he comes and he declares to you nothing is impossible And we focus in this time and scene on so much of the darkness, so much on what is wrong, that we reject his word upon you. His promises, nothing is impossible. And your offspring shall be as countless as the dust or the sand of the ground, and you shall spread abroad the, to the west and to the east and the north and the south. And by you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed and bless themselves. Blessing has been decreed upon your offspring. Good? Okay. And I've asked it yesterday at the training. So why are you worried about your children? Come on. The only time you're going to be worried is if you are out of alignment. So you've taken your children out of the blessing because the parents are disobedient. Because God declared a blessing to your offspring. Your children can't get away from God if you are in alignment. Blessed are you, and you'll be a blessing to others, and they'll be a blessing to each other. My question is, are you so consumed of what they are doing wrong that you're not celebrating and activating the blessing that God has already released, and now what do we do? We become beggars in front of God, and Lord, please come and do this. Lord, please come, and we try and make a servant out of God of what he has already positioned because when God speaks, it doesn't fall to the ground. It from structures and systems in the spirit which the parents need to activate. You see how we've been caught up with religion? And behold, I am with you and will keep, watch over you with care, take notice of you wherever you may go, and I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I've done all of which I have told you. Listen carefully what he said. Behold, I am with you, will keep you. Watch over you with care. Take notice of you wherever you may go, and I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I've done all which I have told you. Bring you back to the land, 
bring you back into unity where you have encountered me. Now, it's the same as in um, Isaiah 11, verse 10 and, 10 and 11. Let me just go there quickly. It's where the Lord asked Isaiah what he has seen, and he, he asked Isaiah with the rod and the almond rod, and it said, it began to... Ten and eleven. What does he declare there in Genesis twenty-eight? And he comes to Isaiah um, eleven, verse ten. And he says, "It shall be in the day that the root of Jesse shall stand up as a signal of the peoples. Of him shall the nations inquire and seek knowledge, and his dwelling shall be glory." And in that day, the Lord shall again lift up his hand a second time to recover, acquire, and deliver the remnant of his people which is left, and from the countries bordering on the sea. The almond branch in Isaiah 11, that is a sign of the fulfillment of God's word. And it's also a sign of watchfulness. Fulfillment of the, the rod will bloom, the rod will bear fruit. You just had a stick that suddenly started blooming and bearing fruit. So it means that God is watchful over his words. You'll see that it comes to fulfillment in your life. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Go back to your prophecies. Do you believe your prophecies? I will not leave you until I have done all of which I have told you. Do you listen to God or do you listen to the world? Are you listening from the spirit or are you visualizing and listening in the natural? As soon as you're in the natural, you've rejected the spirit. That's our problem. We keep on looking at everything and circumstances, everything in the natural. I'm going to be blunt. You're going to miss God. But Jacob awoke from his sleep and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. He encountered God. God spoke to him. And then he realized God is here fulfilling his word. I will never leave you. I want to tell you something. God is not only here at church. God is not only with you when you go and read your Bible or when you pray. He's with you each and every second. And how do you host him? At your business functions, at your prize, at your whatever you've got, at your work. Is he there? Are you hosting him as the king of kings, as the great I am? The one that your next breath surely God is here. He was afraid and said, how to be fear and reverence is this place. This should be your and my words. How to be feared and reverence is this place wherever I walk, wherever I go, wherever I drive. Because you walk with the king. Are 
are we aware of that reverence and fear wherever we go? That fear of his goodness, being an awe and amazement of his glory, his beauty, his splendor, his extravagance, his faithfulness, his love. That's the thing that the world have lost, the fear of the Lord, the reverence and the fear of the great I am. Because once we step back in humility and that fear and reverence, we're starting to host him. You're starting to walk in awareness of God. So then you start to be a person of influence, a person that changes atmospheres, a person that changes creation. Because you're supposed to participate with God, create with Him all the time. You never stop creating. Even your mind creates all the time. This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gateway to heaven. I want you to point at yourself now and say, this is a house of God, the gateway to heaven for everybody else. Why do we pray, please, Lord, I want you to come now. If you are the gateway, you are the house of God, He's already with you. You are the holy of holies. You are the revelation of Jesus Christ. So wherever you sit now, wherever you walk, it becomes a dimension of the Holy of Holies. You see how religious we've been thinking that one day when I die, I'm going to go to heaven and then I'm going to see the Holy of Holies. What about now? What did God declare upon you? But we want to stay in our comfort zones. We want to stay in our religious structures. And we want to be fake. You are a house of God. So reveal Him. Who dwells in you? Who dwells in you? If somebody that's lost walks through that door now, will they be consumed by God? If they look at you right now, will they be consumed by God? Will they be reminded of what they were before they were in the mother's womb? Will they be reminded of the one that they had a relationship with before they were in the mother's womb? You are the gateway to heaven because you won with Jesus the door. So the reality is we should ask ourselves, how many people encountered heaven today because of you? How many people got reunited with Christ by you just walking past them because of what you are? And what I mentioned, you step in, what you have acknowledged, what you have taken hold of, what you said, Lord, I trust and believe it. I'm going to manifest it. I am, I will be it. It's not becoming it. Ja, maar het en ek gaan nog heilig word. Ek werk nog met dit, ek gaan nog dit. Nonsense. God says, you are that. And Jacob rose, rose early in the morning. And took the stone that put under his head.
And he set it up as a pillar, monument to the vision in his dream. And he poured oil on its top in dedication. Jacob made the rock his pillar. What is the pillar of your house, your church? Now God, Jacob came and he allowed a rock as big as his head to become his pillar. He allowed the fullness of God to be everything, to have freedom. That God become the strong tower and not him. You see what he did? The prophetic action that when you take a rock, put it on your head, your body, everything is stronger, is bigger than the, not stronger, is bigger than the rock. And Jacob said, I trade that. Let this rock become a strong tower and I become the lesser one. He poured out oil. He anointed it. You have been anointed. You've been oiled with the presence and the carrier of the Holy Spirit. You've been anointed, activated for the time and season. God created because He appointed you in you. You've got everything. You are ready. And he named that place Bethel, the house of God. But the name of the city was Luz at first. What betekened Luz? Luz betekened separation, departure. But it also means the omen. And what did I tell you the omen means? Fulfillment of his words and watchfulness. So God came and took Luz. And made it the house of God. So he took away separation. And he brought it back into unity. He took away departure. And he brought it back into oneness. So he said from now on my children will not be separated. Will not depart from me. But my word will bring them into the fulfillment. My watchfulness will bring them back into unity. Where is that? In the house of God. So what is part of your commission is to bring back fulfillment and unity of Christ into man. Then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and I will keep me in the, and will keep me in this way that I go, I will give him and will give me food to eat and clothing to wear, so that I may come again to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God. So Jacob actually challenged God on his promises and his word. And he said, I will, I will position you as my God. And God said upon us, my word will come to fulfillment. And this stone which I have set up as a pillar, a monument shall be God's house, a sacred place to me. And of all the increase of possessions that you give me, I will give the tenth to you. I will tithe, but... We're in the new dispensation now. It's not about a tenth anymore. After the cross it is, everything belongs to God. Lord, how much can I keep for myself? Eh? We shouldn't even talk about tithing messengers anymore. Because if you're a lover of God, you want to give him everything.
You and I need to go and sit in our own lives. Have we positioned ourselves with the rock? Are we a house of God? Are we living in spirit and truth? This is the greatest time and season ever in creation. What an opportunity for you and me to reveal Christ, to become the house of God, the house of miracles, the house of impossible, the house that brings all of creation back into fellowship, unity, oneness with God, and all the earth will be filled by my glory. Amen. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we come and we bless you. We say thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that your words transforms us all the time. And that every step that we take, we move from glory to glory. Father, and I declare now, your word says, where God walks, heaven and earth trembles, darkness flee. We declare now, where we walk, because we walk with you as the house of God, as the holy of holies, heaven and earth trembles, darkness flees. That all sickness, all disease, all oppression, all depression, all poverty, everything right now gets destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we come and we change our, our prayers from being beggars to being kings. We come where we've lost our joy, we trade it for joy, Father. And we change our lifestyle to a lifestyle of celebration because of what You have said. We trade our unbelief for faith and for radical obedience. Lord, and we will be the gateway to heaven for so many out there. living testimonies of Yahweh. Karabaka pashete ramani endre. Rocher namani ashte koromani andra. Teramani ante koromani eshte rabaka tera. Lord, and we align our body, souls, and spirit to the sound, the frequency, the vibration, the harmony, the symphony of your perfect love. And where we walk, Lord, all of creation will seek your face. All of creation will be reminded of the Father in heaven, the Creator. It will create such a desire for intimacy with you. We command our body, souls, and spirit, all of creation, everything around us, just to praise and to worship. Him, to fear Him, to glorify Him, and acknowledge Him as a King of Kings. Now we say thank you.